The ground is moving very fast, things are developing, infrastructure is mushrooming. This really is the future. The future is electric and it's coming fast. Hi there, it's Daniel from Sussex Campervans. Welcome. Well, today I've lined up three of the most popular electric vans, which of course are what we convert into camper vans, to show you. Now, there's lots of electric vans on the market, although you might not think so, but these three are probably the premium contenders. First, we've got the Nissan E NV200. The NV200 petrol and diesel version came out in 2009, and it was planned from the beginning there should be an electric one. And this was released in 2012, so actually, although it's had a few advancements, this is quite a well-established model. My second contender is the Vauxhall Vivaro E, which shares a platform with the Peugeot and Citroen vans as well. This came out as a fossil fuel vehicle a couple of years ago, but this is a new release as an electric version, available now. And our third contender today is this Syke Maxus E-Deliver 3, another new model designed from the ground up as an electric vehicle. There's never been a fossil fuel version of this, there never will be, and that of course gives them some design advantages. Well, all three are medium-sized panel vans, all three are eminently suitable to convert into camper vans, and the ENV200 we already are. If you haven't seen it already, take a look in the description, see the video of the ENV200 camper car, which is a fully featured camper van available now from Sussex Camper Vans. These other two vehicles are new contenders to us, and really these three between them are the most viable medium-sized electric vans on the road. There are others, but the range is shorter, the cost is more. Uh, there's lots of reasons why I think a shootout between these three would be a really interesting experiment to do. Well, I'm here in the cab of the ENV200 from Nissan, and nicely laid out. Uh, I like the dashboard, uh, comfortable steering wheel, cruise control, radio and phone controls. Great instrument binnacle, there's a digital speedo to show how fast you're going. And there's a digital rev counter as well. There's a meter that shows how much power you're using. So the heavier your right foot, more power you use. And it shows if you're in the regenerative braking zone as well. And a gauge at the bottom shows how much fuel you've got left. Uh, like a, a petrol or a diesel gauge, this shows how many miles it thinks you can do on the remaining electrical power. Because what looks like an ordinary gear stick on an automatic car here with park, reverse, neutral and drive. And there's a setting called B as well. And that's for engine braking or regenerative braking. Sat nav is included on the Tecna model here. There's heating. Heated seats are popular in electric cars because they use less power than heated blowers and they still make you feel warm. Right, let's get driving. We'll click it through into drive and I'll click the lever across to give me the B or braking setting. And that means we can use the physical brakes a lot less. And as I release the accelerator, it's going to slow the vehicle down using engine braking. And that engine braking recharges the battery. You know, all electric vehicles are remarkably quiet. There's no engine, so really the only sound is the road noise. Of course, with an empty van, there's a certain amount of that. We put a lot of effort into sound deadening across our range of camper vans. So that keeps the road noise to a minimum. You know, with fossil fuel vehicles, you expect a certain amount of lag when you move off from a standing start. Not so with an electric vehicle. Uh, the rotating mass is pretty small, and the torque is provided immediately from the start. Put your foot on the pedal, and vroom, away you go. Especially if you're driving in town, uh, if you're in London or one of the other big cities, it's one stage even better than having an automatic vehicle to have an electric vehicle because there's instant power when you want it and it coasts very nicely to a stop with the engine braking when you don't. Well, that was a great drive. I enjoyed that. You know, this Nissan ENV200 is actually quite a well-proven product. It's been on the road for six or seven years and one or two leasing companies we're aware of who've got a number of these running as delivery vans and they've been doing the central London work for all that time and very reliably, uh, the battery doesn't seem to deteriorate very much with age, reliability seems really good, and of course the maintenance is inexpensive as well. Well, this is the new Vivaro E, the electric version of the Peugeot Citroen Vauxhall collaboration, uh, which gives us this medium-sized panel van. Slightly different layout, but doing a similar job. We've got cruise control, we've got steering wheel mounted controls for the radio, the cruise, Bluetooth, stalk control down here, 
quite a good big screen in front of me. They've gone for a more classic arrangement with a, a speedo with a conventional needle. Uh, we've got our economy meter on the right. Nice and big, charge, eco and power, just helping you assess how you're driving. So again, as soon as we go into engine braking, needle drops down into the green. General driving, we're in the middle. And if you really put your foot down, you go up into the power section, and you know you're pulling the battery drain pretty heavily. Central section has got uh, a meter showing how much charge is left in the battery in terms of how many miles we might be able to do. This switch here allows you to select park, reverse, neutral and drive. And there's a button here to use the engine braking. The economy meter on all these electric vehicles is a useful thing actually. You get used to having it there and always aiming to use the lowest amount of power possible and maximise your regenerative braking to keep the battery charge up. All of these electric vans do put a smile on your face when you put your foot down and feel that initial surge of power move you off at speed. Driving a fossil fuel vehicle does feel like a lot of work after driving an electric, I must say. Of course, lots of things affect the range on an electric vehicle. Now, on a fossil fuel vehicle, uh, things like your heating are kind of free. I mean, the engine's wasting a lot of heat anyway, so the coolant water is pumped around the radiator, and that gives you your heat. Not so in an electric vehicle, it's much more efficient. So if you want some heat, you have to use battery power to get it. Uh, so for that reason, a lot of vehicles would have things like heated seats, even heated steering wheels, to minimize the amount of power you use. And if you want to maximize your power consumption, there's often an eco mode you can switch into. It lets you eke out perhaps another 10, 20% from the fuel or the battery power available in the tank, so to speak. Electric vehicles, unlike fossil fuel vehicles, don't have an optimum efficiency at 50, 55, 60 miles per hour. In fact, the more slowly you go, the more efficiently they use the battery power. So around town is the best of all. And on the motorway, you want to make sure you don't go too fast because going more gently makes the battery last longer. You know, lots of people who don't own an electric vehicle fear what we call range anxiety. They think they're going to run out of power, won't be able to get to a charging point. Really, it's the same as running out of petrol or diesel and not being able to get to a fuel station. And of course, the way around it is you plan. If you're doing a longer run, more than your battery capacity can handle, you plan to stop somewhere for 40, 45 minutes for a high-speed recharge. Motorway service stations now are making great provision for electric vehicles and dedicated service stations too. And of course, if you've got a charging point at home, you plug in every night and you make sure you're fresh and ready to go every morning. Lots of workplaces are offering free charging now. I notice a lot of supermarkets you can go and plug in while you shop. It's going to become ubiquitous. This is the Maxus eDeliver 3 designed from the ground up as an electric vehicle. You can't buy a petrol or diesel one of these. You never will be able to, it doesn't exist. So if you design from scratch for electric, you don't need to make room for an engine and a gearbox and all those other ancillaries. So you can make a vehicle that's more compact, but has bigger internal space. So this eDeliver 3 is designed as an electric vehicle. It's optimized as an electric vehicle. Taking a look at the dashboard, we've got a very, very classic looking instrument binnacle here with a analog speedo in the middle, a meter on the left showing you power available, trip meter and so forth. And then we've got two gauges here, one showing the power consumption, one showing the available battery. Touchscreen infotainment system once again, air conditioning controls down below. To select drive or to select reverse, on this vehicle you simply rotate a knob, a bit like on a Range Rover. It's got a leather steering wheel with a flat section at the base to make it easy to get in and out of the vehicle controls for the ICE, controls for cruise control on the steering wheel once again. Let's take a drive. Certainly when I've been driving one of these and I jump back in a fossil fuel vehicle, it feels sluggish by comparison. You know, all these advancements make driving an electric vehicle a bit different to driving a petrol or diesel vehicle. It takes a little bit of getting used to. It's certainly better in almost every way. Quieter, faster, smoother, easier, more controllable. It really is the future. This vehicle lets you choose three levels of regenerative braking. You can choose a low level just to give you a little bit of assistance right through to a high level, which is pretty much like pressing the brake pedal when you take your foot off the accelerator. If I take my foot off now, there really is quite a strong braking effect and I'm losing oh, 10 miles per hour every second or so. 
and that's great if you're in traffic, say in London, you can pretty much drive with a single pedal, very relaxing and of course very economical. So how do their stats compare? All three of these models have different battery options to choose from, ranging from 24 kilowatt hours to 75 kilowatt hours. Vauxhall claims that their largest 75 kilowatt hour battery will achieve 205 miles or closer to 175 in real driving conditions. Charging on a standard AC wall plug will take on average 7 hours, with the largest 75 kilowatt hour battery taking 11 hours to achieve a full charge. On a rapid charge, these electric vans will charge to 80% in under 45 minutes, making long driving distances viable if you factor in a charging stop with a comfort brake, as you might already when driving a petrol or a diesel vehicle. In terms of size, the ENV200 has one option giving you 4.2 cubic metres of carrying capacity. The Maxus e Lever 3 comes in the middle with two options, a short and long wheelbase option offering 4.8 cubic metres or 6.3 cubic metres respectively. The largest of the three is the Vivaro E from Vauxhall with up to a grand 6.6 .6 cubic metres capacity for the largest size. The ENV200 and Maxus e Deliver 3 come in at under 1.9 metres in height, which means you can easily fit under standard height barriers. The Vivaro E is slightly taller at 1.94 metres. Converted to a camper van with an elevating roof, you should allow for adding 70 or 80 millimetres onto these heights. So here you have it, three groundbreaking vehicles, one of them really well established, one of them an electric version of an established model, and one of them a brand new vehicle. And all of them, I think, very, very viable, very practical vans. I think we'll be seeing a lot more of them on the road in the years to come. I think we all know electric vehicles are the future, but is it time to get one now? Well, there isn't really one answer to that, is there? For some people, yes, for some people, no. Of course, electric vehicles cost a lot more than fossil fuel vehicles. But then we have to look at the total cost of ownership, not just what's it going to cost you to buy, what will it be worth when you want to sell it, and what's it going to cost you in the meantime. The government are offering quite a good incentive to adopt an electric van at the moment. It depends on the exact price, but it's a substantial amount of money uh, to po point you in the right direction. And of course, in terms of charging, it's much, much cheaper to charge up. It might cost you under £10 to charge up with electricity, uh, whereas filling a vehicle this size with petrol or diesel will be £80 or £90 at current prices. Servicing is much cheaper because there's not much to service. It hasn't got an engine, hasn't got a gearbox, there's no oil to change. It's a much simpler procedure. It's more of an inspection, really. With the regenerative braking, uh, brake pads and linings won't wear out so fast. The ENV200, for example, it's been out for a number of years. Residual values are pretty good. They certainly sell on pretty well. They're, they're establishing their place in the market. So is it for you, is it for now? Well, that only you can answer that question. What I will say is if you're in an inner city, if you're gonna do a lot of driving in the city, if you want to park in restricted places, electric certainly has massive benefits. If you're doing long, long runs, you're trunking across Europe all the time, maybe it's a little bit early to go electric, uh, but the ground is moving very fast, things are developing, infrastructure is mushrooming. So this really is the future. The future is electric and it's coming fast. Could this be the year to get you in a camper van, maybe even an electric camper van? Do give us a call at Sussex Camper Vans, 01403 336369. Email hello at sussexcampervans.com and don't forget, like, and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that next time I make a video, you're among the first to know. Thanks for watching.